In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can install OpenSense Firewall. Before starting the process, I would like to show you a little bit overview of what we get with this firewall. So it actually has the firewall stuff with IPv4 and IPv6, multi-van, VPNs, hardware failover, the best feature, reporting and monitoring, and IPS. All right, so let's start with the step number one. First of all, we're going to download OpenSense. So click on download OpenSense. And most of the time, your server or your computer, wherever you're installing OpenSense, it's like AMD64. So just select this one. And I think it only has for this one, not for ARM. And for the ISO, you have to select the DVD mode. If you click on DVD, now you can see ISO installer image with live system capability is running in VGA mode on AMD64. Okay, and UEFI boot is supported as well. And then you can select the mirror location. It depends wherever you are uh, geographically, you can select the location of there. So for me, I guess this one is fine, Lisweb. And then I'm going to click on download and it will download. You can see right here, it's iso.dz2. So it's going to be extracted file and we will need to unextract that to get the ISO. And then we will build the USB. So click on download. Yeah, it says some error here. So we will try another link. Even in the link, you can see it's leasefab.net. So that means their website is down. So we can try any other one. Like, let's go with a server ion or whatever it is. So let's click on download. Now this one is started downloading. It's 491 MBs. It's going to take a minute. So I'm going to pause the video recording. All right. So OpenSense file is downloaded here. You can see it's OpenSense 25.7 DVD-A. And it's actually the ISO file. I thought maybe it's going to be something like .bz2 as it was showing in the link. But it's actually an ISO file What we can use any of the application to make it make a bootable USB. So I have like two options here. I'm going to show you both step by step. Okay. So option number one is Rufus. It's a portable application, like you can install it on your computer or you can just download the portable version. We go to Rufus website, I can show you. So yeah, currently uh, their version is 4.11. So .exe file is going to be installed and the one with P is portable. So you just double click on it and it opens up. And the second option is Belena Ether. And this one is like compatible with Mac, Linux, and Windows. But Rufus is just for Windows, the Microsoft Windows only. So I will prefer using this one because you can use this on all of the operating systems. All right. So let me show you the interface of both, like the Outlook. So this is Belena Ether. You uh, select the file and then you select the USB and then you click on flash and that's it. It's really simple. And on the other side, Rufus, it's same as well, but you get a little bit more options like MBR and, and things like that, that. And so my USB is 64 gigs and it's plugged in already. And from here, you say disk or ISO image and then from select, you select the image. All right, so let's select the image. I have OpenSense right here. And it says this image is either not bootable or it uses boot or compression method, which is not supported by Rufus. We got the boot error because the file is actually not ISO. It's .bz2 extension, so we have to unextract it. So let's go back to the folder and right click on it. And I'm gonna use 7-zip and I'm going to click on extract here and it will start the process and you can see now it's making the actual ISO file which we will be able to use in Rufus or Blender Editor. 
all right so the extraction is completed now let's try again let's confirm if the correct usb is selected and then this can iso image and select and let's find for open sense this is the actual file you can see the time as well which is correct i'm going to click on it and it will scan the image and it should show me the start button Once the USB process is completed, use that USB into your server or computer wherever you want to make the OpenSense work in. Then boot your computer from USB drive. You may need F12, Escape or Dell key to start up. And then on the OpenSense boot menu, it will appear in the CLI. So that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to use actually in a virtual machine, but if you want to use on a actual server so that was the method using the usb so for virtual machines it's like pretty straightforward pretty simple you go to the download portion and then under dvd since we know that lease web is not working so we're gonna try any other let's let's try something from let's say denmark and i'm just gonna click on copy link address and on my Proxmox in local. I'm gonna go to ISO images and then download from URL and then I'm gonna paste the URL. It will show you uh, the numbers and the file size and the file actually. So just hit download and it will start downloading the file. Awesome, it's downloaded. So now I'm going to create my virtual machine. Okay, so we can see what is recommended to install OpenSense. So I'm gonna just type OpenSense hardware requirements and it's asking for 1.5 gigs dual core. So that means two cores, eight gigs of RAM, 120 GB or larger SSD. All right, so start with the hardware configuration setup. So since I'm using a virtual machine, still I need the resources to run it perfectly. So I'm gonna name it OpenSense and I'm using VM ID 100 and the operating system, we should have only one. And under system, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I'm going to use the default CBIOS, but as we saw in their uh, website, we can use the UEFI as well. But I'm gonna leave it as it is and in the hard, hard drive section i'm going to use 120 as recommended and uh, i'm going to use two sockets and two cores which is for like the more is the better what i always say and then i'm going to use eight gigs of ram and the network and i'm going to click next start after created and once it's created it will automatically start Now it's asking me to press any key to start the importer, but I'm not going to import anything. So I'm just letting it do whatever it's doing. And then once it's prompt me to like log into the system or something like that, that's something is tricky for OpenSense because on other firewalls like PFSense and others, you get the installation menu. But with this one, you directly get the username or the configuration which is confusing like we are running it the first time why we are seeing the configuration or the username we won't know and the tricky part i will show you as well once it's all loaded okay so after loading all of the services you can see the login like for me first time i was surprised like i did not install it so how i'm supposed to i'm going to know the username and the password but if you read this welcome message welcome OpenSense is running in live mode from install media please log in as root to continue in live mode or as installer to start the installation so to install it we need to log in the username installer and the password for both account is 
open sense. All right, so let's do that. Installer and open -E -E. Okay, so now it's showing me the actual installation process. Okay, so first thing, key map selection, the system control driver for FreeBDS for standard US keyboard. So it, it's it's for the keyboard. I'll just continue with the default key map. And then, and now it's asking for the disk action to perform, like do you want ZFS or UFS? These are actually the two options. If you have like multiple disks and you want redundancy, then use the ZFS method. Otherwise, if you just have one, the UFS is fine. So I'm going to hit OK on UFS. And here you can see it's showing me two options. One is 2 gigs. Another one is 120. So the first one is actually the USB attached, the ISO images uh, image attached to this one. So don't hit enter on that one. Make sure you select the actual disk which is 120 GB and it's asking for continue with the recommended swap partition I would say yes so a swap partition is actually the page file you can consider if you know about Windows page file or you can consider it as a virtual RAM so now it's asking last chance are you sure you want to destroy the current disk yes and install this open sense all right, so now the OpenSense is completely installed and here we will set the root password. And then after that, we will simply hit on complete install. So it's going to confirm and exit and reboot now or just power down the system i'm just going to reboot and meanwhile i will go to the machine and i will just simply unmount the iso file so i can just make sure it's booting from the hard drive and there is another way as well. If it got the IP address from DHCP, then definitely it's from the hard disk. But if it shows again 191.681.1, that means it's still loading from. So it's actually loading the LAN network. So let's log in using the password reset. Uh, yeah, it is loading from the hard disk, but the LAN IP is, I guess, set. So let's set the IP address and choose number two and uh, configure IPv4 address for the LAN. Just gonna say hit uh, Y and then for IPv6, no. Enter the LAN IPv6 address, none for enter. Uh, do you want to change? No, I don't want to change self site, no. And restore, no. I'm fine. So it's doing things for LAN. I think we need to set up the WAN address. Or no, it's actually got the IP address from the HCP. And it's saying it LAN, but actually it's WAN. So I'm going to add another interface and I'll show you that in the next video. But this is the IP address we will use to access our OpenSense firewall. So this was the complete installation process, pretty simple, straightforward, but just you have to be a little bit careful doing things. So it can be tricky sometimes if you just I've been username root and the password OpenSense and you like make changes and do all the stuff. And when you reboot it, nothing is there because you you just did everything on the live mode. So to install it, you have to use the username installer. And thank you so much for watching the video. Once again, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe the channel. I will see you in the next video. Bye.